There are three main types of point clouds that are automatically loaded into the software. The first one is this uh, rectangular spaced, equally spaced grid. The second one is a uh, sphere. And the third one is a set of randomly generated points where you can determine the number of points that will automatically be generated. Each of these points is put into an octree with um, configurable depth. So here you can see a depth of seven. Each of the points um, is uh, represented by the this voxel here. And this actually shows eight of it shows the uh, actual voxel that the, the point is contained in, as well as the seven uh, neighboring voxels that are the child of this voxel's parent. Um, we can increase the number of voxels, or the, increase the, um, the depth of the voxels, and that will result in, in smaller voxels. So here you can see we can decrease the size of this point. It's extremely small. Uh, or you can have a smaller depth, which will result in larger sized voxels. Of course, depending on the number of points and the number of voxels, you can have more or fewer points per smallest voxel. So here we have 100 points, and we have 100 of the smallest voxels, and so there's only one point for each of these voxels. If I increase the number of points to, say, 1,000, now we have um, 1,000 points, yet only 442 of the smallest voxels, so there's about 2.26 points per, per voxels. If we increase the depth to, to 9, then we have 1,000 voxels, 1,000 points, and each of these voxels, each of these points, is represented by a single voxel. Uh, one of the advantages of octrees is that it has very efficient uh, ray, ray casting traversal. So I wrote a ray tracer, which actually, for each point, determines the ray that passes through the camera center and the image plane, and then traverses the octree to determine if there is a collision or not. So a collision is represented by a red pixel. So each of these red pixels is a, uh, is a voxel. The closer voxels have larger number of pixels. And for the pixels that don't intersect a voxel, that's represented by a color, which is dependent on the number of voxels that the ray traverses before exiting out the bounding box ray. So obviously when there's a small voxel depth, you can see that all the pixels are red because every ray intersects a point and if we go to uh, a very high depth, then there are very um, few pixels that intersect with a, a voxel, and so most of it is represented by the color. If we show the, um, this is the rectangular spaced grid, or the equally spaced grid, and you can start to see the voxel structure um, based off of the number of it that it traverses. Here is the sphere, ray traced. And so the area around here that is not immediately traversed by, or that, that has very few points that are in the octree, um, those, those pixels do not traverse very many, whereas you can see the darker blue here represents areas of a large number of pixels. For instance, up here, there are a large number of points that are in these voxels, and down here, but in the center or on the outside, there are not as many. So this ray tracer um, has a, um, it's multi-threaded, so you have a configurable number of threads. So right now it's using 16, which I found is the fastest for this particular processor. We could actually go down to one, um, which has about a third of a second ray tracing time, um, switch to eight, and that's about a tenth of a second. And then if we go up to um, the full 16 threads, then we have more or less real time. Um, so each of these, so for each of these points, you compute the ray, you traverse the octree, and if it's if it does intersect a point, then it becomes red. Otherwise, you, the color is dependent on the number of voxels that it traverses. And we can visualize that, if I turn back on the point representation, 
um, by actually tracking a particular array. So the next point that I click will that ray will be stored and then we'll traverse the arc tree. So here I've I've clicked a, a point and we can visualize that ray. It's visualized by this white line. The first thing that the ray will intersect will be the bounding box and that's this uh, large red box. The second one will be the arc tree that the child of that bounding box that is closest to the camera origin which is represented by this smaller um, square here. The next one will be the closest arc tree that contains a point which is um, actually not at this time the closest point uh, the closest voxel to the, the ray but the first one that contains a point which is shown here and you continue to traverse the arc tree until it exits out the outside. Um, if we increase the number of points say um, use the rectangular grid you can see that it, the points that the voxels that intersects changes and we can actually um, uh, if we the, the worst case will be when there are a lot of points that you will this particular array will intersect and that will be represented here by going down one of these diagonals of the rectangular grid so this is the rectangular grid here's um, we want to track this point right here. So the ray has been drawn and shown here we intersect quite a few. And uh, this is the result. Um, we can actually traverse we can traverse this like so. If we look from the side view and turn off the points, you can see that there are quite a few of the smaller voxels that are ray traced.